Hey guys, how's it going? Burstfire here, and welcome to today's uh, video. Just about to record um, <clears throat> from Burstfire Challenger, uh, but patch 8.14 is out, so let's go through that quickly. Uh, Aatrox, they basically nerfed him. Um, he's still good. They just overbuffed him because he wasn't really that weak when they released him. The issue was that people didn't know how to play him. Now that people know how to play him, and also they buffed him, he was busted, so they just nerfed him a little bit. Uh, still fine. Uh, Fizz, basically uh, the one shot with the W was just too much, so essentially what would happen is, uh, you know, he'd get his his ult onto someone, like an ADC or a mid laner, um, he'd E in, E down, auto attack, the trident thing would like get to full the stack on the, on the champion he'd ulted, for, and then he just pressed W, dead, every time with ignite, um, at like... So this basically means there's a little bit more counterplay. Still, like, it's still good. Like, Fizz, if you want to just destroy, like, you know, a mage or, like, something like an Anivia, I think Fizz would be really good into that. But you just want to destroy something like low mobility, like a Jinx AD carry or a, a Twisted Fate mid or just anything like that, just pick the Fizz, it's still fine. Um, the only thing is now, basically, his attacks uh, are empowered after the fact. So instead of just going one auto, you're dead, it's like five autos, you're dead. So it just gives you more time to counterplay. Uh, Jinx, they increased her base health, decreased her growth, the way it works out is about level 13. Um, the Jinx will be uh, lower health, but essentially makes her stronger in the lane phase, so she can just, you know, get through it easier, and then get to late game where her health doesn't really matter if it's down, like, you know, 20 points or something. It doesn't really matter because she'll probably have some sort of lifesteal or whatever, so. Um, good for Jinx. Karma, um, this is where I stopped reading before, it was just patching before, so... Uh, base mana regen increased, growth decreased, base armor increased, Q splash radius increased, and power detonation damage and decreased at early rank. So this basically means the, the karma like QR one shot is decreased, but everything else is better. So ultimately a pretty good buff for karma just makes her like more playable. Because the problem is when you had karma before, it's like you either hit the Q and then you win, or you miss the Q and then you're fucked. Now it's more balanced, more like a champion. And it also means those level 1, like, Karma Qs are just not going to do as much, so that's good. Um, Q base damage and damage ratio increased at later ranks, so this basically is AD Scion, so, you know, the, you know, Tiltarella, like, Yomus and things like this, um, just full AD Scion could come back, or maybe some sort of tank variant, maybe like a Triforce Scion, you don't know, but that's what this is buffing, and I think AD Scion, just from what I've seen, is actually better anyway, uh, even if it's just, like, Lethality or whatever, so maybe, like, some sort of a... You know, either like Black Cleaver, Sterax, something like that. More of an AD Scion rather than a Tank Scion. So I like that. Uh, Twitch, base health increased, health growth decreased. Same thing as uh, Jinx. This will make him get through the lane a little bit earlier. Uh, there was some mid-patch updates or whatever. Uh, so Aatrox got buffed. Caitlyn got buffed. Tristana got buffed. I think Varus got buffed as well. Yeah, Varus got buffed as well. So these are all just buffs. Uh, Nocturne got nerfed a little bit, but he was still good and he's still good now. Um, Talia got nerfed a little bit, um, but she's still good. She's still good now. She's not... See, people think Talia is like this busted thing. It's not. Like, people don't know how to play against it, which makes it stronger. But you compare it to Zinzao, Graves, and Nocturne, I think Talia is actually the weakest of the four um, next to Graves. I think Zinzao is just a better version of Talia, and same with Nocturne. So that's what I think. Um, simple buffs. I don't know if I already covered these because I didn't look at the last patch or something. Maybe. I don't know. Um, RE, E mana cost decreased, E charm duration increased, so that's just, uh, basically, um, a buff to RE in the early game, which is good. Q base damage increased, Q damage ratio increased, um, okay, I mean, yikes, like, buffing Cass late game, not what you want to do, so Cass was already strong, and now she's really strong. Uh, E base damage and resistances, resistance reduction per stack increased. Um, so basically Corky's like E is like a shred, an armor, a resistance shred, so this is just a buff to Corky, I think Corky's still terrible, I think he needs, like his auto attack damage needs to be increased to what it was before, um, with the passive, because they kind of cucked that, which is a lot of his strength, they need to make it so that he's squishier, but he, um, he hits harder, right, that's what they need to do with Corky, so... Whatever. Elise, health growth increased. Good. I like Elise. I think she's still terrible. Um, she doesn't do enough damage to match things like Talia or Evelyn. Um, but she's coming back. Like, you can still play Elise, but they need to, like, buff her AP. Like, honestly, just, like, buff her base AP on all her abilities by, like, 10 or 15, and then she's fine. Um, Nasus, passive lifesteal increased early. 
Uh, sure. I mean, Nasus is terrible because you just, like, shit on him early, and even if you don't, he's just useless. Like, he's just going to be stacking a side lane while you fight, and if he's not stacking a side lane while you fight, then you just kill him because he's not fed. So Nasus is terrible, and this just makes him die less, I guess, in the early game. He's still bad. Don't play Nasus. Uh, Pantheon, bonus attack speed at level 1 added. W base damage increased. Good. I like Pantheon jungle. That's obviously for Pantheon jungle. I think that's that's fine. Q and R damage ratios increased. I think Rek'Sai is okay. Still pretty weak. Um, same thing as before. Like just compared to the top four junglers right now, she's just not that great. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of bruises and brawlers and things, like even something like a Sejuani or a Skarn is probably better. So Rek'Sai, uh, let's just have a look at what the increases are. Um, you know, ten percent. 10%, 20, uh, 10% again, so, I mean, uh, I shouldn't say 10%, I should say 0.1, so, basically, this is increasing the bonus AD, blah, 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 blah. it's basically 0.1, so, 10% of your total AD increased, um, so, questionable, but ultimately, still pretty bad. <clears throat> I think base damage is, is what you need to increase, not the scaling. You do not pick Rek'Sai to scale. Like, Rek'Sai needs to be, like, bang, boom, snowball, like, damage. Same as Shivana. Rek'Sai, Shivana, very similar right now. Terrible. Uh, Q cooldown decreased, okay? I mean, this won't really matter because Sivir's mana cost is so high in the lane that, like, you have a cooldown on your Q, like, you won't be able to utilize it fully. So this is basically going, oh, Sivir, now you have to go, like, Essence Reaver, which she was going anyway. Um... I don't know. I Interesting, but I still think Sivir is... I actually thought Sivir was okay for a while. Like, you can still play her, like, in teamfight comps and things. Like, if you have some sort of a tank jungle and then, like, a hyper carry mid, so something like maybe a Yasuo or, um, I guess, Ariana, kind of, but not really. Like, Sivir's basically, like, if you already have damage. So maybe you've got, like, a carry top. So, like, Renekton, Darius, uh, Fiora, something like that, but... I don't know, I think Sivir's pretty bad. You can still get her, and she's good with Anivia, um, because they can just infinite wave clear. You put Sivir in, like, mid lane, and Anivia goes to top lane, and then you put, like, I don't know, just some, some random tank, like Maokai or something, or Malfa, or probably, yeah, like Maokai. Just, you can you can do stuff like that, so it's it's an okay pick. It's just, like, this doesn't really change that much. It just makes her a little bit stronger, so that's fine. Q damage ratio increased. Um, this is buffing uh, mid lane Velkos, of course, because support Velkos isn't going to have as many items. Generally, when you buff scalings, you're buffing laners that are going to get gold, and because, you know, um, obviously scalings require items, but when you buff base, you're buffing support. So they're buffing mid Velkos. I don't think they liked support Velkos because they wanted the whole, like, oh, Yasuo, and then you use Velkos to beat Yasuo, and it just never really worked out. So um, <clears throat> this is just mid lane Velkos being buffed a little bit. I think Velkos is actually, like, a really good solo queue pick, but I think it's, it's very niche. Like, if you don't play Velkos, don't play it. You know what I mean? Like, you have to be kind of like a committed Velkos player. Uh, Vayne, W damage increased late. 4%, 4%, 12%, 14%. Mm, nah, like, Vayne's terrible. Um, the thing is, like, even if you... If you go even, then you're fine, and you have a good mid-game. But if you go even and you get late game, and it's like Vayne versus Jinx or Vayne versus Varus, Vayne's just fucking useless. She'll just get one shot by any form of CC... Um, enemies won't be tanky anyway, like, you'll be against, like, eight, you know, Blue Cane and fucking Renekton and whatever, and just get destroyed. Um, her lane phase is terrible. Like, Vayne's a bad pick, don't play Vayne. Uh, Vi, base attack speed increased, R cooldown decreased. Um, okay, that's nice, that's a buff to Vi. I think Vi is really good for solo queue. Um, what's the buff? 625644. Hmm. I don't really know much about attack speed, but that doesn't seem like very much, right? So that's probably like an extra auto attack in like per camp, maybe. Like not even that. Um, R cooldown, 130, 110. I mean, that's actually kind of good. That's that's 20 seconds. That's pretty big. So I think Vi is okay. I think just Vi is just like a bad version, like I said, of like Nocturne, Graves, Talia, uh, and Zin Zhao. So play them. But if they're banned, then for, for all like means, go like Vi. Jarvan's the other one that's there. But Jarvan's probably better than Vi because he has EQ where Vi has to wait for his R, her R. Um... And Vi does more damage and is better in brawls because she gets the passive, but Jarvan's better at just one-shotting, which is kind of the meta at the moment. Um, Victor, W cast range increased. This is okay, but what the fuck? Like, this is not the problem with Victor. Like, it's not, oh, he has to get too close to throw his W. That's just retarded. Like, buff his damage if you want him. Like, what is this? That's a waste of time. Um, Dr. Mundo, Q health refund decrease. 
I mean, good, nerf Mundo, like, this is top lane Mundo just getting a little bit nerfed, which is fine. I still think that Mundo's okay, I still think he's not busted, I don't think he's been busted for a few patches, but, you know, you play, like, Mundo against something like a Renekton or a Darius, then I think, um, I keep saying Renekton because I played with a Renekton on my team the other day, like, I was gonna pick Darius, and then he said, no, put me on Renekton, turns out he's one of the, like, the best Renektons or whatever, so, um, I say Renekton, but I'm thinking more like, you know, Darius, Camille, um, that sort of stuff. You know, so um, this is good. Nurse is early game, but he's still going to be fine with his scalings running down the ADC. Uh, Q cooldown increased, late R cooldown increased. Nerfing Rakan, I mean, I feel like Rakan is kind of like brain dead before this patch, and he still kind of is. Like, it's only 10 seconds at rank 1 and 10 seconds at all ranks. Um, and then the cooldown on his Q is negligible. Like, do you even max Q? Yeah, you max Q, you do max Q, but... Two seconds is like, eh. Oh, the thing with, with Rakan is there's not enough choice. That's what the, what the point of this nerf is. Is like, you just kind of dive in all the time, and then you jump out with your E, and then it's like, you either get a kill, or you don't get a kill, but it doesn't matter, because you never really were in risk of dying as Rakan. So, pretty good nerf. I like these sort of, these sort of they call them simple nerfs. I think they should just call them, like, pat, this, this is what all the patch notes should just be, is just simple buffs and simple nerfs, because that's, like, what the game needs. Uh, all these, like, reworks to scalings and all this fucking rubbish is whatever. But anyway, good. Um, Rakan's still good. Sejuani, our stun duration decreased. I mean, Sejuani, by far the best um, tank jungler right now, alongside Skana. Zac is just non-existent. Um, seen a little bit of Gragas, but not too much. Mostly just AD junglers, like the carry junglers we spoke about. Um, so, bit of a nerf to Sejuani. It kind of sucks, but you can understand why they've done it. Um, so there is that, but it kind of sucks. Like I feel like Sejuani's in a, in a really good place because she's having to compete with all these like AD junglers, so or like you know these carry junglers. So it's kind of sad. Like it's like the end of the tank junglers. I mean, it's only like zero point five, but I'm saying like the idea that they're even nerfing Sejuani is is the problem, not the way they've done it. Like, this is pretty negligible, but it will, you know, affect a kill in the late game where you lock someone down and they don't die, so. Q slow decreased early. I mean, the whole point of Shen is to, like, you know, stomp your lane or go even and then ult and then you fall off. So I don't think nerfing Shen is good. I don't think Shen is busted. I think this is a terrible idea. Um, you max Q anyway, so it's only the first couple levels, but, like, that's where Shen can cheese and whatever. I think this is bad. Just leave Shen. He was fine. Our explosion damage... No! Swain is not busted. What? What? 0 0.3! 0.3 damage ratio, what? That's fucking ridiculous. Swain is not even busted. He's like a good mid laner, a good bot laner. He's not busted. Like, god damn it. Like, Swain is already falling off and now you're getting rid of him. Like, what? That's so weird. And 0.3, not like 0.1. Like, all this fucking, tw like, fucking Rakan shit. And then, and, oh my god, over, over nerf, definitely an over nerf, that's ridiculous. W return decreased, uh, late, I mean, what do you mean late? He maxes W first, that's not late, that's like level 9, <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Decreased late, what do you mean? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Oh my god, decreased late? Who writes these patch notes, what the actual fuck? That's like level 9, um, that's huge, that is actually huge, you can still one shot people, obviously, but this just means you can't, like, you can't, like, brawl as well. So, Talon's still fine at, like, assassinating, but this is pretty fucking massive. Um, this is pretty fucking big. That's, like, 40 damage is huge. Uh, E-base damage decreased late. I mean, <laughs> it's Wukong, like, he's fucking Wukong. Everyone says, oh, Wukong's so busted, Wukong's so... He's not, he's Wukong. He just, like, farm early. If he jumps on you, you stun him, and then you get your jungler to gank. It's like, it's Wukong. Fucking nerf Nimbus Strike. Like, decrease what? I mean, it's not even the damage. It would be the attack speed or the Q armor shred. Like, not the fucking E base damage of fucking 40. <laughs> like, whatever. Like, 40 damage. Like, what? 40 damage. Like, like, it's different on Talon, because Talon's like, you throw the W, you throw the, like, you throw the W, your Q... W, auto, R, bang, that's your combo. With Wukong, it's like you E, auto, Q, auto, W away. And you lose 40, 40 damage, but it doesn't matter because your combo is not an all-in combo. It's not like Talon. Like, Wukong goes in and then gets out and then goes in and then gets out. Talon's like, literally, 
one shot people then leave like it's completely different it's a completely different nerf um like what the fuck this is not going to change anything about wukong and it's going to shit on talent like did they just look at this and go oh i think 40 is a good number and oh, we used it on talent so we use it on wukong what the fuck base damage decreased late w damage ratio decreased i mean nerf zoe like, okay, I think that her, her W passive damage is definitely too much because you don't even have to aim it. Um, so there is that. Uh, items. Oh, yeah, they changed the funnel thing. Now, I don't remember, is this was this this patch or last patch? But essentially, um, if you have the most total gold on your team, lane minions will grant 10 less gold. This basically means you cannot funnel. Um, if you funnel... Uh, subverting a lot of normal laning patterns... Yeah, they're just nerfing it. So, uh, do not funnel. Like, 10 gold per minion, and you're probably going to get at least, like, 50 minions. Like, that's... Do not fucking do that. That is that is literally inting. Because if you die twice, you're giving 600 gold. Right? If you just int two kills. So, that's literally what you're doing. And also, funnel was already terrible, in my opinion, because it, it left you late game with a 4v5. Because your fucking mid lane is going to have no farm. So, terrible, terrible, terrible. Good. Um, right, that's it guys, just about to record my best fight challenger, that's basically it, see you guys.